Good morning. Want to show you something very special. Facebook has done some more changes, so I'm adapting to that. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. And here's something special. There's Magdala. And what's special is one vehicle. And it's a bus. And it's parked. And there the travelers are staying at Magdala, a Lutheran church from San Antonio. I wasn't able to show you many cases of that in the last almost 18 months. Before, I wouldn't even think of showing you because it was normal that it was completely filled. And now it's a joy to have a bus of pilgrims back, but it's still a rocky road for the pilgrims to get here with all the restrictions and all the bureaucratic hurdles. So, but still it's good news to see a bus parked here. <laughs> It's like a candle lit in the dark, you know. And that's the way a lot of human history is. There are people, gifts from heaven, really. People who are uh, amazing uh, light. light it's a hazy morning and the sun broke through that haze i'm turning around here so i'm trying to keep this on the sun for you actually i was just going through this little passageway here in the fence and i had to lift up the barbed wire which impedes the cows from going through So we'll head along our favorite trail here, skirting the, the foot of Mount Arbel. So today we have very interesting, the high point of, well, can you say really a high point? Because every point prepares for high points. So everybody, every point is important in life, every moment, even moments of sadness, moments of difficulty. They're very important because our soul gets reset, or our, our person grows, or we persevere. So we shouldn't despise one moment over another, you know, or under another, we shouldn't. And yet we can have obviously moments to celebrate and we have moments to cry. I like those famous lines. So let's go to Ruth. So Ruth has come back to Bethlehem with Naomi. I'm just keeping walking, okay, instead of stopping and taking out the text to read it with you. And I invite you to read the text. And if you're able to read it now, go ahead. And if you read it later, that's perfect. Because the more time we spend with these texts, the better. And to go back after the sunrise stroll and chat, if you're going to head to sleep, then take out the text and read it. Maybe you'll fall asleep reading it. That's, it's a great way to fall asleep. <laughs> or maybe you're waking up and, and, and you can read the text after we're done as well. So Ruth comes back with her mother-in-law, and obviously they're very poor. They're going to start off again. And they're in that society where women were more in the background, weren't they movers and shakers, in a way, because some of them really were, like even Ruth herself with her, her response, her decision, which moves the heart of Boaz, who's a very strong guy, even his name says, with strength. 
is a, is a, a strong fellow and he gives instructions of protection for her, so he's strong. But Ruth is also leaves a major wave in history because even though she's a widow, even though she doesn't own anything, even though she's going to a people that's not her people of birth, she brings a spirit of determination with her. She's a really strong woman, a woman of valor, that famous word of scripture. And every woman is called to be a saint, and every man too. And that path is a path of increasing valor always. As the Lord allows us to be tested, and then we always have the choice like the little kid in Monday morning, Mommy, I have a toothache. I can't go to school. <laughs> There's just the exit out the easy door from responsibility, from opportunity. And we all have that temptation. We're all called to be people of valor. That role of our will moved and strengthened by grace. God wants us to be strong, to be renewed. And think of all the martyrs, the whole world against them, around them. And they go serenely forward, even loving their enemies. But every saint as well. In a certain sense, the saint is also, it's truly a martyr, because martyr means witness. Just we use, we reserve the word for those who give their witness in death through their blood from the word martyr, but uh, every saint is giving great witness because all their choices are for God. And that means, like Jesus said, come follow me, deny yourself and follow me. And to, con to continually deny our pride, our anger, our, our selfishness, our envy, our jealousy, our, all the things, that they're with us all our life, you know? Shouldn't be surprised. Some people have their battle in one area, other have it in another. You know, sometimes we see people with addictions, alcohol or other substances, and we always have compassion for them because that's their battle and it's very visible, very social. But we all have our battles. Nobody doesn't have a battle. Everybody has a battle. So there's Ruth and she doesn't sit lazily by, she just gets up out of her easy chair, if she ever had one, and out she goes to the harvest fields to glean leftovers from the harvest like the poor did. And that since there's a tremendous dependency on God's providence, and God's providence is the big, the big theme of Ruth, the big theme of her life. even coming from a people that was despised spiritually, religiously. Because the Moabites were considered to be fruit of the incest of Lot. And there with all this, let's say, negative start, and then all the setbacks, like her husband dying, you know, she keeps going forward. These are the saints also in our times, times of difficulty, times of pandemic, times of lockdowns, economic challenges. By the way, the other day when I saw the two deer, it was back further there near, very close to where I came in across the little fence there a few minutes ago. Uh, on the way back here, just beyond this hill, I saw four boar and I wanted to get them on film, but I wasn't able to. I wanted to get a bit closer, and that was my mistake. Because <laughs> they're more sensitive to my presence than I was to theirs, so they, they knew how to hide and escape the camera. So there we have Ruth and Boaz 
Boaz takes care of her. You know, that's great. The strong people who take care of the weak, there's something marvelous about that. Because for something, we have strengths. Some of them are intellectual, others are physical, just physical, because somebody is, has a, on a crutch today, they broke a leg, and somebody else will lift their bag at the airport and help them. The strong help the weak. The strong shouldn't crush the weak. We have our strengths in all our areas, even spiritually, especially, especially spiritually, to help everybody around us. The great artists do their art. They're strong there. And they teach little children who are already, who are still weak, to become artists. And the teachers do the same. And the blacksmith and the farmer and the sailor and the fisherman So we've come along this path here right now. And everyone has come along a path in life so far to this moment. And the sun is rising for you as God gives us another day. And the sun rose for Ruth. And Boaz proposed to have her for marriage. And then who's born from Ruth? Obed. I'm not sure if he's called Obed in, uh, in Hebrew or Obed because that Aleph Bet. Bet is the second letter after Aleph, after A. And that B can be pronounced, that Bet, Be, can be pronounced hard like Be or Ve. Or so I'd have to check on that. But actually it means servant. It means also the word work. The, what a servant does is also the word for worship. So a little bit like his mother, Ovid gets this gift of being a servant. His identity is to be a servant. And his identity is to worship him. That's what Ruth said. Naomi, my God will be, your God will be my God. I'm coming to worship with you. What a beautiful thing that the identity of a family member would be worship. And would be servant. And actually somebody who worships and doesn't serve is also a bit of a contradiction. Because how could we do externals worshiping God and not worship him in fact? Indeed, in deeds, by deeds. And what person will be doing lots of religious worship and not lifting a finger to help the needy? It's very interesting that this word for worship and for service are intimately connected. I don't know if those cars are people going to work at the hospital. Down here, today is Shabbat. So the minimal services have to continue. Maybe it's people going back from work. They do night shifts. You know, think of all the people in, that move in the early hours of the morning, going to serve. And if their heart is with God, they're also worshiping. And then Obed is also the grandfather of David, the father of Jesse. So that makes Ruth the grand, great grandmother of David. Imagine a woman from a people despised is the great grandmother of the anointed one, the king, King David, to whom is attributed the book of Psalms. In the sense, then there we see somebody again who served his people and who worshipped. And if you just connect that with the gospel today, you'll see that Jesus is very critical of religious leadership that's not truly worshipping, that's not socially responsible and helpful, that's 
it's not serving and lifting up the others. So this all fits very well together. And we thank the Lord for his inspirations and his thoughts. And I think at this point we've got a lot to chew on for today. So it's about time to say goodbye. See you later, alligators. Thank you for joining. God bless you.